So Testitrade is releasing the backtesting platform for options called Lookback. I've been waiting for that platform to come out like for so long, so I cannot wait to show you all the backtesting features and how it works because I'm really thinking that this is a game changer. I've been waiting for a backtesting platform like this one to come out, so I'm really, really excited to show you all of the different features that you can have with the Lookback platform. But before we go really into the, the platform directly and I show you all the different features and don't worry, I'll put timestamps in the video so you can quickly jump to the part that you're interested in, I want to give some context on why this is such a major improvement into the option trading world, especially for the retail side at least. The thing is, when you're trading, it's really important and it's really interesting and insightful to see how a strategy has performed, you know, over a certain period of time so you can have an idea of how profitable is the strategy. The problem with options is that there is so much data that it makes it very, very expensive to backtest options. And you would probably ask me where is the difference between, for example, backtest testing options compared to backtesting, I don't know, like any strategy that would apply on a stock. Well, the thing is, when you backtest a strategy on a stock, you literally just have the stock and you have the strategy and it's, you can have like black and white rules and that's it. You can really do it quickly. But the problem with options is that you do not just have the stock. You have, first of all, you need to choose the stock, then you need to choose the expirations, then you need to choose the, either it's a call or a put and the, the strike of that put or call. And that creates a lot of different combinations possible. So it makes it very, very expensive to back this any option strategies because you need to choose, as I said, the stock, the expiration, the strike. I mean, it's very, very expensive in the end if you try, for example, to back this any option strategy. And that's why currently all the different services that you have that allow you to back this options is usually like for $100 a month at least. And it's very fair because back testing options cost a lot of money because the data is so expensive. And to give you a small anecdote, I had tried to code myself an option back tester. And funny enough, coding the option backtester wasn't necessarily the hard part. Purchasing the data was the real problem because there was so much data that it just got so expensive very, very quickly. I mean, if you were just willing to buy, I don't know, just the option data just for the SPY, let's say for the last five years, you would at least pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. So imagine having not only years of data for one stock, but for all the stocks, for all the different expirations. I mean, it's a lot of money that is being invested in a platform like this one. So that's why I want to thank and I'm eternally grateful for this trade to put that platform out there for free because this is really a huge game changer and I'm sure that me and plenty of other retail traders are going to benefit from this like crazy. So now that I've put a bit of context around why this is such a big game changer, let's go into the look back platform so I can show you all of the back testing functionalities. So this is the home screen when you arrive on the look back platform. So first of all, you can see that it's not written a lot of things, it's just written enter a symbol above. And the first thing that we can see is that there are several tabs on that platform. You can see that there is a chain tab, there is a forecasted profit and loss tab, an analysis tab, and a backtest tab. So there are four main tabs to that platform. And the first thing that we need to do is to input a stock. So for the sake of the example, let's say that we choose Apple. So you go at the top and then you write Apple. And once we have selected the stock, we're going to see in the chain tab, all of the different expirations with all the different strikes. So for example, if you go, let's say into the September 17th expiration, you click on there, you see that you're finding all the different calls or different puts at all the different strikes. And there is a third column, which is the Delta. So for those who wouldn't know what the Delta is, Delta refers to how much value an option is gaining or losing based on a $1 movement of the stock. So this is one definition of Delta, but usually Delta is also referred as a way of quickly knowing what is your probability of profit when you trade options. And let me explain. So for example, when you sell options, you ideally want your option to expire at the money. And the delta is usually referred as the probability of expiring in the money. So for example, if you see that an option has a delta of, let's say, I don't know, five or 30, for example, if we look at, um, for example, the 32 delta option. So as you can see, the 145 strike on Apple, the 145 put has a delta of 32, 0.32. What that means is that the put option at the 145 strike roughly has 32% probability of expiring in the money. And so because it has 32% probability of expiring in the money, it has 68% probability of expiring at the money. And we can roughly use those probabilities of expiring at the money as a probability of profit. Meaning that if you, for example, sell the put option at the 145 strike with the delta of 0.32, 
then you know that you roughly has a 68% chance of profit on that trade. That's usually how Delta is being used and that's why it's also being put into the lookback platform is that it's usually used that way. So for example, let's say that we want to backtest, um, let's say the 32 Delta that I just talked about and you are going to click on the bid, which means that you're going to sell the 145 puts. So now that we have selected the, the option that we want to backtest, let's go on the second tab, forecasted profit and loss so as to see see what is in there. When we go into the forecasted profit and loss tab, you can see that we have this cone of probability. So where you can see those different candles, those green and red candles is basically just Apple's price. And you can see that over the six month, Apple has been going from $126 to $150. And this is where we are as of the August 16th. And what you can see right now is that based on the put that we decided to sell, anything that is green means that you're going to be in a profit it. Anything that is red means that you're going to be in a loss. And you see that you have this white zone. Well, that white zone basically means break even. And what's interesting before we go into the backtesting of this put, what's interesting to see is that you can see really well how your put is going to behave based on the stock's movements. You can see that, for example, if um, let's say the stock arrives for example, at $148 by September 12th, you can see that you will have an expected returns of $196. So this is really interesting because you can really just move your mouse and see how uh, basically you're going to be in terms of P&L based on the date that you're choosing. So you see that now August 19th, if the price is at $150, I will make $51. But if we stay, for example, around $150 and we move, let's say, to September 14th, you'll see that I'll be now making $221. So this is a quite intuitive way of knowing where you'll be at in terms of PL based on the date. And one thing to note, actually, is that you can see that the break-even point is actually increasing. You can see that this green zone is expanding as time goes because of the time decay, because of all those things. And we are basically widening the break-even zone because when you sell options, basically you have the time decay working for you. So it's normal that you have your break-even zone that is widening over time. So this was for the forecasted profit and loss is pretty straightforward. You can just modify if you want, for example, like to have the price over one year and then you have the cone of probability. It's quite interesting. And I think this is a great uh, feature to have in this look back platform. Now that we have seen this, let's jump into the analysis tab. So the analysis tab is nothing crazy for, uh, for example, this tab in particular, that's basically to show you where you'll be at in terms of profit and loss. And if you're familiar with the Testworks platform or any PNL graph at expiration, you know what it's referring to. So basically, when you sell a put, you see that you have um, limited profitability and you have an unlimited potential loss. You have this yellow line that refers to the PNL at expiration, and you have this blue line that refers to the PNL based on the day that you're choosing. So you see that you have this button where when you slide it, you basically can change the date. So you can see that the date is changing, and you can see that as we move forward in time, this blue line is getting closer and closer to the yellow yellow line because we arrive at expiration. So it's normal that the blue line is at some point merging with the yellow line because we are at expiration. So that's quite interesting to see the PNL on the day, but that's something that you can also see in the test work platform. So nothing new. What's new though on this platform is that you can switch to the statistic tab. So what the statistic tab shows is you can look how much probabilities of profit you have at a certain point in time. So this orange line shows the probability. And what you have on the X axis, so in this axis, is your PNL. And those are the probabilities. So for example, if I place my cursor right there, you can see that on August 19th, I will have a 68% probability of basically making $1 or more. And that's quite interesting to show it like this because you can basically move like this the button and you can see how it's going to change over time. And you can basically play with that curve to us to see what are your probabilities of profit at any given time. And you could also add the PNL and bell curve so as to see what would be, for example, your PNL standard deviations. And it's quite interesting because it shows you in terms of time where you'll be at in terms of profitability. You can see what are the odds of earning more than, for example, $1, $10 at any given time. So that's quite insightful if you like to play with those probabilities. But now comes the most important piece of this software is obviously the backtesting feature. So with the backtesting feature, what we have when we arrive on this tab is that you see that we have directly the contract that we have chosen in the first place.
always in the option chain. So as you can see, I have sold one contract, that's why it's written minus one, then the type is a put, then this is basically referring to the delta, that's the Greek letter for delta. As you can see, I've chosen the 32 delta, and DTE is days to expiration. So as you can see, I've chosen the September expiration, so there is only 31 days to expiration. But of course, you could, for example, add another leg, you could sell another call if you were willing to build a short strangle and you were willing to backtest that. But for the moment, let's just stick to selling a naked put and we'll go into more details examples after. So when we click on that plus button, it's going to be written add a leg. So that's why you can add manually, for example, an option that you'd like to buy or sell so as to backtest it. But what's really, really interesting about this backtesting tool is that you can really have a lot of different parameters when you're setting the backtesting. For example, you see that we have three main customizations that we can do so far on the backtesting platform, which is take profits early, you can set up a stop loss, and you can also set up the backtesting so as to exit at a certain number of days to expiration. So if we're following the tested trade way, we know that they usually take profit at 50%, and they usually don't have a stop loss, but they exit at, for example, 21 days to expiration. I think that's the right number of days to expiration. So this is really the typical testy trade strategy. So if we click OK, and then we click on Run Backtest, this is going to run a backtest of continuously selling puts on Apple at the 32 delta every 31 days to expiration, taking profit at 50%. If the trade is not reaching 50% max profit by 21 days to expiration, then it just closes the trade. And after that, it's reselling another option at the closer 31 days to expiration. And it's doing this over and over. And after that, you're going to see the result. So if we click on run backtest, it's going to show us in a matter of seconds, all the PNL for this strategy in particular. So what you can see in front of you, and this is really important to mention because at first I got confused, those candlesticks that you can see are not representing just one day, but it's one month. So basically the backtest goes back to 2011, which is pretty far in time. And that's really, really amazing that we have so much data available. And what you have once you have run that backtest is that you have a lot of different data that is available to you. So first of all, what you can see in the graph is, as I said, one candlestick represents one month. So what we can see is that it would have been quite a profitable strategy and you would have reached 22, almost $23,000 of profit if you have kept selling puts on Apple since 2011. But you also have plenty of different statistics that I think are very insightful. For example, you can see the total number of trades. So you would have taken 476 trades uh, if you had been selling puts on Apple and taking profit at 50%, if not closing at 21 days. Then you can see your max loss. Your max loss is of around $2,000. You would have collected uh, an average $3,087. So I guess it's a notional value. So I guess it would have been like $3. We would have seen an average profit per trade of almost $50. Average days in trade is of almost five days. So this is quite interesting because you see that even though we sold, for example, a put options at 31 days to expiration, you see that we stay in the trade 4.66 days. So that's really not long. And we were always selling other puts once we've closed. And something that is also quite interesting to see, which is usually quite a big metric, is the average profit per day. So as you can see, we made $10.66 per day on average. So you can see that this is pretty an insane, honestly, backtesting feature. By the way, you, you can also see the win rate. I didn't even talk about the win rate, but you can see that it's an 84% win rate, which by the way, it's very, very important to note that is you can see that we sold the 32 Delta, meaning that theoretically I would have had 68% probability of profit, but you can see that my win rate is much higher than 68%. So that's why I'm saying that it's roughly associated to the probability of profit, but in in real life, it changes a lot because you have things such as the time decay, the implied volatility overstated. Usually the win rate is actually higher than what you have on the paper. So you can see that this is a pretty honestly detailed uh, backtest because the thing is, it goes back to 2011. I mean, it goes back a while in time. And this is not just one year or two years worth of data. This is like 10 years worth of data. And this is pretty amazing to have that much data at our disposal. But let's make things a bit more complicated so we can have more 
fun. Let's say that instead of just selling a put on Apple, let's say that we sell short strangles on the SPY because this is one of the most, I'd say, used strategies by Tasty Trade, the short strangle. And the short strangle consists in selling a put and selling a call at the same time. So basically, you bet that the stock is staying within your two strikes. So let's back test that to see how it goes. So I'm going to do it manually so you can see it. So the first thing to do is to input each leg. So a leg is referred to an option. And to show that you're selling an option, you need to put minus one. Oops, minus one. And then we're going to sell a put. And let's say that we choose the 25 delta. And we're going to do 45 days to expiration, a very classic tasty trade way of doing things. And now that we have set up the put option, we need to sell the call option. So let's do the same minus one. And for the call, and then we're going to choose the same delta and also 45 days to expiration. So first of all, we're going to choose it without any, um, for example, take profit or anything. We're just going to let it as it is so as to see how it behaves if you just wait for expiration. So this is the result of the short strangle backtest. So you can see that if you had sold continuously short strangles, you would have had a win rate of 71%. You would have made an average profit per day of $0.94. But you can see that you would have had such some big drawdowns, especially in March 2020. And obviously, it's not surprising because the COVID crash has been one of the, you know, uh, biggest crash in terms of magnitude and the movement was really big. So it's not surprising that you have such a big drawdown, even though if you were actually selling short strangle right now, that would hurt to go from $22,000 profit to minus 20,000 in the span of two months. I mean, that would have been quite a big drawdown when you consider that you probably took like, let's say, almost 10 years, nine years to get to that point. So it would have taken you nine years to get to $22,000 profit and two months to be actually at minus 20,000. And even though you would have made it back quite quickly, you know, it hurts on the short term when you go through that drawdown. But let's change a bit the backtest so as to see how it behaves if we start, for example, putting some tech profits and exit at 21 days to expiration, for example. So as I said, I'm going to go into the parameters. I'm going to say max profit at 50%. And I'm going to exit at 21 days. So now we're really in the classic test trade strategy. If I click run back test again, and let's see what are the results. So you can see that by actually doing exactly like the test trade way, meaning that you take profit at 50% and then you exit at 21 days to expiration, you would have made less money by actually closing your trade at 50%. You would have had worse results compared to not touching anything compared to before where you would have gotten back, I think, to around 20,000. And I remember that the average profit per day was of 90 cents. Here, it's three times less. So you would have actually made less money by managing your trades rather than just leaving it. So you see how insightful actually that backtesting tool is because now you can really have insights on how is the strategy is performing and how it would have been doing in terms of like crash and in terms of drawdown. And you can have some real insights of that backtesting tool. And of course, I could make backtest of a backtest was so to show you all the different strategies, but this will come in later videos where I'll show you more backtests around different strategies so you can have more insights on what works and what doesn't. I hope this video will have been insightful and you'll have liked discovering this lookback platform personally i think this is really an amazing work that they did especially giving it for free i mean i will be eternally grateful for that platform that's for sure if you have any question or if you have any comment and i'm sure that you have if you have been trading options you know how cool that platform is so if you have any comment just put it below i'll be happy to answer any question or just discuss with you if you have any comment to make please make good and informed decisions i'll see you in the next video and in the meantime i wish you all the best